Hello and welcome to statistics. Rather than jumping into chapter one, I thought I'd just do an introduction of the course as a sort of an overview. So statistics is actually something that you've done a lot of when you play a game of cards, when you roll uh, dice, when you, uh, you know, what's the probability of rolling a three? Well, there's six sides to the dice. There's only one three, one and six, that's statistics. And statistics are used a great deal, even though a lot of people groan and moan and complain about them. You actually use them uh, a lot in your daily lives whenever you see statistics such as the percentage of a population or statistics, what your grade point average is, things along this line. And they become more and more important with uh, the inclusion of information technology and the ability for organizations to easily gather uh, in a very cost-effective way massive amounts of data. So what's becoming more and more important is something called data analytics, which statistics is closely related to and kind of bridges from statistics to data analytics. What that really means is you take this large amount of data, which is called big data, and you turn it into, as the saying goes, you turn it into information. So it becomes something useful. You filter it in whatever ways that you want. So we couldn't do that many years ago in the fact that we just didn't have the data. It was so hard to gather and it was even hard to uh, spend massive amounts of time trying to find out what you really needed. Like, it's like mining. In fact, they call it data mining, looking for the nuggets. And it's done, um, a lot of my former students use a great deal of Excel, which we're going to be using in this course, to do uh, data analysis and data extraction. So what you're doing is you're summarizing it into something that makes sense. Well, you're going to use software through Excel mainly. So we're going to look at business data. We're going to look at all kinds of various types of data. And we're going to use it to make what we feel are reliable predictions about what percentage of the population would actually buy our product. And uh, we'll use it for quality issues, for improving business processes. So we're going to use this, uh, these steps. Uh, we're going to define the data. We're going to collect it. We're going to organize it. We're going to visualize it. We're going to spend a bit of time in an upcoming chapter on literally creating charts, which are used a great deal in business, and you've used them in your own life, but probably some of you have never created a chart in Excel. Well, that's going to change. And that's what's done a lot in business, just basic information like pie charts, bar charts, all of those kind of basic types of things. We want to make sure you graduate from this course and you can say, yeah, I know how to create a a bar chart in Excel, as simple as that might seem, but that's what industry wants. And if you've never done it before, well, it's not so simple because you've never done it before. And then we're going to analyze the data. Like, what does it, what is it showing us? Uh, what is the, what are the trends? What are the forecasts? So we're going to uh, do the statistical portion of the business, business analytics, all of the uh, major schools in the area of business, specifically supply chain, want business uh, analytics. It's the latest wave or fad, but it's not really a fad. It's just because the, the ability to gather information, such as every time you scan something, those barcodes that have been around for a couple of uh, decades now, the ability to scan it and it goes into a computer. Now businesses are able to extract it in real time and to, and put it on uh, like mobile devices. So you no longer even have to go into an office. You could be wandering around your store with a tablet. Uh, and you in this course, by the way, are going to be able to do your studying on your tablet or your phone, should you like, because I've modernized the course 
over the last couple of years. And this is sort of the final step in the process. So you're going to be able to do all kinds of practice problems on your phones, your tablets, your computers, whatever the case may be. So, and see how well you're doing. So that's exploring and analyzing data. It helps us with making decisions. As you can see, they define big data as it's, it's massive amounts of, of this information. And unfortunately, it's collected in all kinds of different ways, in all kinds of, if you want to say, fo different folders or diff different systems. A lot of companies have people who are software engineers who take the information so it can actually talk to each other. For example, Walmart has over 120 sources of information, and they don't all talk to each other very well. So a software engineer will make them talk to each other, like a universal translator, if you're a Star Trek fan, you know what that is. But you know, you know, just allow them to, to allow the different sets of data to talk to each other and then have the manager very easily be able to pull out the pieces of information that they want. And you need to do this very quickly. Finding out that your company is losing money uh, so weeks or months after the fact doesn't really help you out. You want it now. And you want to be able to put it in some sort of structure. So it's just not, just, just picture this in your mind. Take the numbers from one to 100. Okay, so picture them in your mind. Now, if I wrote them on the screen in a jumbled order, 1, 17, 83, 2, 21, 64, okay, in a jumbled order, it would just be like, well, this is just, okay, this doesn't make any sense. But if we put them in a sort of a, an order, an ordered array, which we'll talk about later in the course, like 1 through 100, Oh, okay, now they're sorted. Now I can figure out where the 50s are, where the 80s are, etc. So you have uh, some basic terminology. Uh, the variable is, uh, or the observation as it's sometimes called, is the individual items. So that three that I mentioned on a dice, on a, or a pair of, uh, on a uh, die, I guess. Anyways, that would be the variable. The data is the ones that are associated with the other. Again, a deck of cards, all the clubs are associated with each other and a, with the entire deck. And then the statistic summarizes the data of a particular variable. So it'll be things like the things that you've had before, like an average slash mean. And we're a range, the highest number minus the lowest number. We'll go through all of these throughout the entire course. But I just want to give you a basic overview of some of the terms. Descriptive statistics, uh, taking the numbers and literally using them to describe what the data is. It's much more than just what was the class average. You're going to see that as we move into upcoming chapters. It's much more important. That's an important variable. It's much more important to understand some of the other parameters. What if the class average was 75%, for example? Well, it's not bad, especially for statistics. But what if half the class got 50 and half the class got 100? The average is 75. But that means half the class is getting it, and half the class is struggling to even just barely get by. They're just barely uh, understanding what's going on, at least to an acceptable level. Then we're going to take a uh, big part of statistics here, inferential statistics, where you take a sample and you apply it to a larger group. This is where you'll see on the news, you know, they did a poll for a, an election and they'll survey 1,400 people, for example. But then they'll apply that to the general population to determine who's going to vote for which parties, etc. Uh, statistics, uh, I heard of... <laughs> Uh, a phrase many years ago that statistics can lead to lies. Uh, and it's really how they're presented. And we'll even actually look a little bit at that later in the course about and how it's gathered. Uh, I'll give you a very uh, quick example. If you were to go on and do a survey of the students at your school and ask them what their favorite radio station was, that would not be representative of the population of Calgary. 
because the students are a younger population. Say anywhere from 18 to 25 would be, say, the majority of the students. So the type of music that they would listen to would be very different than people who are in their 40s or 50s. So that would give a very distorted, it would be correct for that particular group, but it would not be correct for the population of Calgary. So you can, you can get statistics and make them basically do whatever you want, which sometimes people uh, you know, uh, have an issue with, and I can understand that. You can distort the numbers if you don't set it up properly, but if you do it neutrally and randomly, then you're okay. All right, so we're gonna use uh, Excel. That is what industry is almost begging us to do more of, uh, or demanding might even be a better word. They want students, and I want you to be able to sit at a job interview when this course is over and say, I used Excel in my statistics class. In the last three uh, plus years, I've changed the course from it being the old fashioned tables and calculators to we use Excel. In fact, we may even use some websites that I'll give you, all right? We're not gonna use Tableau. Uh, that's for a data analytics course. Uh, if you are interested in it, uh, you're welcome to, but we're gonna focus in on Excel and use Excel to calculate things like standard deviation and mean and uh, some probabilities and uh, things along that line. So we're, that's going to be the focus of this course. So when you graduate and sit at a job interview, you say, yes, I used Excel to create a bar chart, pie chart. I, I know how to, uh, how to sort information because I expect some of you are never used Excel before or very limited use of Excel and others would be more advanced. So there's certainly some be some things, even if you're more advanced, that will be new to you. So we're going to make sure that everybody goes up, uh, gets up to uh, speed on things. And there will be YouTube videos that I'll create uh, for those uh, Excel applications that you will use in your assignments and your tests. All right. So there are Excel sheets that you need to download from the book and the website. You are going to uh, have to realize basic things like, uh, you know, what a row is and what a column is, which I'm assuming most, if not all of you already do. And you're going to be able to use the data sets that come with the book, uh, which are going to be, so you don't have to type in the data. So you don't have to worry about typing in a bunch of raw numbers or a bunch of raw data. Those will be given to you. All right. So that's the end of the introduction. Uh, just a very brief overview of some of the things we're going to talk about in this course.